Yeah, that hook guy has a point. Ooh, that's a hot mug guy. Hey guys, this is my review for Real Ghostbusters. Now this was an episode that I've always had a kind of a fond heart for because one, it has a perfect evolution of Supernatural fans in terms of conventions and just the overall fan base. It describes how they were in the beginning and it definitely describes how they were now towards the end. I like the tongue-in-cheek humor talking about some of the issues that the show has actually had, including what the hook guy talks about with why don't they have weapons on bungee cords. And I actually just really like the idea of Sam and Dean getting to see themselves. This is again another meta episode, so you've had two in a row now. You've had changing channels and now you've got this one. And this is beyond meta. If anything, this episode would be replicated again for the 200th episode, where they go to that school to see Supernatural being done by an all-girls uh, schoolhouse. And there are some issues here and there throughout this episode, because like the tongue-in-cheek jokes, particularly the bungee cord joke, it's good, but there isn't a lot like it. There's a few here and there, but more so it's just kind of low-grade humor, as well as the couple at the end, which is just put in so oddly but I'll get to that. This episode follows Sam and Dean who are called to this house, this building, as an urgent call from Chuck. It turns out actually it was Becky who called them to the first Supernatural fan convention. This woman is absolutely crazy, but the funny thing is she describes a lot of the very hardcore Supernatural fans. People hate this person, yet I have met so many like her through my comments, especially when I started getting critical of the show in season 12. This woman encapsulates a large group of Supernatural fans, at least the die-hard ones that were very strong and adamant before this show ended. Admittedly, it's actually quite funny when they roll up to the house and you see the six other Impalas, which is funny because those are probably all of the other stunt Impalas. They had six Impalas on this show, if I'm correct. The building that they're shooting at is actually the Stanley Park Tea House. It's actually one of the most beautiful buildings on that island. I love that it's also a LARPing episode, which again would be touched on in further episodes of Charlie. But I like how they point out the silliness of what they are. I like how these guys are all acting as Dean and Sam, but they're caricatures, especially the two who help them throughout the episode. I thought that the relationship with them was quite funny because they're trying to stay in character, but at the same time, they're also like, this is ridiculous. They also have a relationship with the brothers, the characters, like they say. They are just regular everyday Joes who are inspired by these guys who get to save the world, but also have a brother who's willing to die for them. Because as far as they know, the story ended with Dean going to hell in season three. They never got anything after that. Which admittedly though, brings up a little bit of a point that I have a kind of a criticism. Funnily enough, it's Hook guy again. He talks about how Ruby is untrustworthy. And I don't know whether he's referring to her in season three or if he's returning, referring to her to season four. However, that's impossible because Carver Enlin never wrote anything past Dean going to hell. Kind of curious of what he's talking about, but again, that might be a joke that's kind of meant for us as the audience rather than the people there, most likely. Really, when Kate Cassidy was in, you didn't know. You had no idea what she was doing, and that's what I liked about that ruby. I thought the use of the ghosts in the building was actually a pretty good idea. I liked that there was a twist, that the mother wasn't really actually the evil one. It was, well, she was evil, but it was the three little hobgoblins that like scalping people. I thought that was kind of cool. I did like how they used the woman who was dressed up as the deranged mother to try, but then the cell phone goes off. I like a lot of elements of this episode. I think that some of it's really funny. I like it when the guy's trying to light the lighter, but it doesn't go off. He's like, how can Dean always get this on the first try? And like I said, there's a lot of these little tongue-in-cheek humor bits, but I thought there would just be a little bit more because it's not excessive. If anything, it's under excessive. I think it pops up a little bit too infrequently, for it to be a consistent joke thing, because they had a lot more room. They had at least, I don't know, three or four more instances where they could do it. Overall though, The Real Ghostbusters is probably one of my favorite meta episodes. I've never gone to one of these cons before. I've seen videos of them. I've seen people talk about them. I've seen how much the prices are to go to one of these things. And it's never been of interest to me, but I can imagine the absolute fanfare that is at these things, the camaraderie between fans, 
I kind of wonder what would happen to me if I went and started voicing my opinions about the latter end of the show. It's still cool to see this and because this would eventually build the Supernatural fan base. They eventually started making jokes about it and they built it on. Which, speaking of which, the jokes that didn't land, they make a joke about the homoerotic subtext, which I have never gotten that shit ever. I kind of wish that they had made some kind of comment about how stupid that line of thinking is. Like, come on, people. Weird. But then also the end bit, where it turns out that the two that were helping them are in fact a couple themselves. It's a little odd, really, because the guy does this. The taller dude puts his head on his shoulder, and it just looks really weird. I figured that it maybe would have been better if the, the shorter guy did it. It's like an awkward little take, and then Dean's reaction to it as well is a bit like... Yeah, it's not terrible, but clearly the joke has not aged well since 2009. It just doesn't come across good. I don't think it came across well back then either, but eh, kind of dollars of donuts, I guess, for some. And the real Ghostbusters isn't really even a story episode until the very end, which this was a little bit of lazy writing because Becky brings up all of these bits from the last few books talking about what Bella did with the cult and the fact that Chuck never mentions anything but again they never asked him which also kind of is odd that the brothers never asked Chuck about this. I guess I understand why they did that but I think it's a little bit of a lazy tack on and it's one of the the detractors for me to this episode. However what we're gonna get in the next episode is completely fine because the next episode is one of my favorite episodes of this season. So in the end I'm gonna give the real Ghostbusters a 5 out of 7. It's a solid episode, it's solid fun, and poked at the fan base and kind of showed what it was then and what it definitely is now. But let's see what you guys have to say about it. I'm interested to actually see what your comments are so let's read those off. The Real Ghostbusters is a really good episode whose only crime is being sandwiched between greatness. You have changing channels preceding it and abandon all hope following it. It's a perfect example of how to take a generic Monster of the Week storyline and dress it up with something very entertaining with the whole convention. This episode is and one later on in the show where Sam and Dean LARP with Charlie are the best ones in this vein. Can't wait for the Hammer of the Gods review. I'll admit actually, yeah, yeah I point that out at the end of my review as well, is that it's it's an unfortunate spot, but admittedly that whole idea of saying that it, it takes the whole Monster of the Week idea and adds a little bit of flavor to it, it's good. I actually do, that is a good point to it. It's definitely the formula they would take as the show would continue on. But yeah, no, you're, you are correct with that assumption there. That's a good way to describe this episode. Congratulations on reaching your 200th episode review of Supernatural Journey. That's what I call being a dedicated fan. Some would call it possibly something else, but <laughs> let's see what you have to say. Uh, this episode is silly, but still a funny meta episode and enjoyable enough to watch for De Sam and Dean to have to deal with their fans at their first Supernatural convention. The conclusion with the lead that sam gets from becky about where the cult might be is probably the only connection with the main storyline of the season my only two problems with this episode is that it gets a bit too silly at times and it's just like previously with sympathy of the devil the character becky i'm sorry but i can't stand this character i mean i understand that she is a big fan that is really obsessed with supernatural and for this reason she's supposed to act like this but man i really find her annoying well, I'm kind of curious then what you thought about with my connection between this and like the super diehard Supernatural fans. I love the Ghostbusters. I love the real Ghostbusters. I particularly enjoy the two guys that who went from LARPing to being real heroes, and the reveal that to other LARPers that the ghosts are real, and Chuck steps up to take out that ghost. All around a fun episode. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of like building with the uh, the additional characters, and that's always fun to see. And while Supernatural would always have kind of those issues it would try to develop its side characters even in the last in the latter not very good seasons the real ghostbusters i never finished this episode i've tried to watch it but i can't get through it eventually i'll get to it i'm curious about what your thoughts are it's the only episode of this season that i've never seen all the way through i'm kind of curious as to why i might actually just comment on you actually i'm probably gonna do that right now curious as to why you haven't. The real Ghostbusters is an interesting episode, very good, back when Chuck used to be decent. I loved him as Prophet, I like him as 
in his Supernatural Season 11, but hated it in Season 15, what they did to his character. I do like the cosplaying references to that fan fiction of Sam and Dean are getting together. I think when Chuck is talking about losing his virginity, he's referring to the Virgin Mary. I do like the fan fiction. I do like seeing people cosplay as Sam and Dean in this episode with everyone doing the dark voices because essentially, again, very reminiscent of what the show would become in the end. The real Ghostbusters is an interesting episode. I really miss and love seeing this version of Chuck be here before Dab ruined the character in season 14 and 15, and I find Becky completely irritating and extremely annoying, and I definitely don't like that she and Chuck get together at the end of the episode, and her knowing where the cult was, uh, to me, felt like a bit of a stretch, but I really did enjoy the end of the episode where Dean realizes that the two men that helped him are actually a couple. But I do like this Chuck. It's nice to see Chuck as Chuck and not as what he would obviously become. Congratulations on hitting your 200th episode for Supernatural. I know I'm late in the game with your reviews, but I'm really glad I found your channel. And I'm, I'm glad you found it as well, Joe. The real Ghostbusters is such a good callback to the show's history. Uh, a lot like the 200th episode in season 10 fan fiction. Although fan fiction was more of a love letter to the fans, the real Ghostbusters likes to poke, fan, uh, poke fun at the nerds who were treated back then. I can relate. This episode reminds me of the movie Galaxy Quest. Yes! Which is a movie I hope you review in the future. Actually, I should, should review that. Funny enough, the, the in the Ghostbusters cartoon, the real Ghostbusters. The animated Ghostbusters go to see the live action debut of the Ghostbusters film and they make their complaints about it. That's really why we see Sam and Dean being very bewildered about the Supernatural convention overall and seeing how fans view them who have no idea that they are they really exist. Although I never really liked Becky in terms of a character, it adds more to my hate towards Chuck trying to get in a relationship with a super obsessive fan. It goes along with how I much I hate Zeus for every, for every woman he hits on, so I can see how Chuck had a similar style towards humanity. It's definitely a meta episode. I feel like it is much better than season 4's meta episode where Chuck was introduced. The whole tidbit at the end where Becky revealing Crowley as, has the cult is a bit of a stretch considering Bella said that Lilith holds the contract like Dean um, has held the contract, uh, that has his contract held by her. With Bella being all emotional about this whole situation with her soul about to be taken by a hellhound, I don't see her lying that she gave it to Crowley. All the same, this episode is slightly a good transition after the heavy ending of Changing Channels. Ah, I don't know if I can say about the, cha the transition. It's it's definitely a reprieve of the about the like I said the ball smasher that you're about to get in the next episode. I didn't know that about the animated Ghostbusters uh, show. I watched a few episodes as a kid, but I never really got into it. But yes, the Galaxy Quest actually you are very dead on with that reference, and it is probably something I should review in the future. <laughs> The real Ghostbusters is the only episode in season 5 that I don't like. The thing that the previous episodes done is reveal only one important information. For example, Changing Channels, this episode reveals that the trickster is and nothing else. Still a great episode but lacks story. Same almost goes for the next episode, The Real Ghostbusters. It only reveals where the cult might be, but the main difference is that I really don't like this episode. Every time I see this episode, I think Supernatural's team just sat together saying, okay, why don't we make an episode to make Sam and Dean appreciate their lives, appreciate each other, and give it a tip about the long lost cult while we put them in an ordinary ghost hunt, and why not make fun of ourselves as well as the conventions and the fans. This is the episode most damaged and changed by the latter revelations around Chuck. Everything involving his character plays a lot darker now. This episode lovingly poked fun, uh, so fun at some of the excessiveness of fan culture, but now it plays with ever so more subtle mockery of the hardcore fans. It is hard to see Damien and Barnes as anything other than uh, derision. It feels more like a mockery, mocking their queer fans they included in them in in some way. Three out of seven. This episode is unique, but I personally don't like it. I understand where you're coming from. Like I, I I'm happy that someone else kind of sees where I'm coming from with the, the relationship at the end. I feel like it, it's meant to be a joke rather than an actual thing that has not aged well really at all um and yes i knew that the whole cult reference was definitely going to be something that you guys would bring up with talking about this episode it's like it's such a stretch and it's probably the worst stretch you're going to get in this season but at least that's it at least that's all we're going to get in terms of stretches this episode is fine for the 100th anniversary special uh, don't worry uh, it is in the 100th anniversary special but 
I made the exact same mistake. So don't worry. I, yeah, I know where you're coming from. Here you go. When you are celebrating the show in such a manner, you expect to see lots of references and characters we have seen thus far. And although we got that, I don't think it was enough. Oh well, man, we're really on the same line here. This episode focuses more on the ghosts that haunt this place and the intel the boys get in order to further the plot, rather than the overall celebration of the show. Whether this is a good thing or a bad thing, you decide. But me, I think this decision robbed the episode of its energy. This is probably due to Eric Kripke not wanting to go full meta at this point in his career. So by no means it's a bad episode, but if you really want an amazing anniversary example special episode, look no further than the 200th episode. Unlike Kripke, Jeremy Kerber went all over, uh, always went over all over the top with everything he did. Doom Patrol, anyone? I still haven't seen Doom Patrol. But I'm funny, yeah, no, 200th episode definitely takes what this episode tried to do and goes all the way with it. I think that Kripke wanted to keep on a line um, and also the numbers for this season. It's funny enough, but the numbers for this season are not that high. They're not as high as season four. Season four was way higher than this episode, uh, than the majority of this season. So kind of can see where the hesitancy is, but yeah, no, you, all, you bring up good points there, Nico. All right, there you go. Thank you guys for your comments. Now we have Abandon All Hope. I love this episode. We went from two very, very funny episodes to one that's about to break your balls, or ball in my case. Anyways, give me your guys' comments about that episode and I'll read those off in the next review. If you liked the video, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, subscribe. Until then, I'll see you guys next week. Thanks for watching the video. My name is Nitz, and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say the click is finally getting back together in an all new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign but we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.